One downside to skipping ahead in the series is that both twins now have new boyfriends, and I've never heard of either guy before, but it won't matter because I'm sure they'll have new boyfriends when I skip ahead again. Argofomp book review, Argofomp book review. Today's main character is Jade Wu, a shy girl who wants nothing more than to fit in with her other classmates. Unfortunately for her, she's the only Asian student at Sweet Valley High, so she stands out. To make matters worse, her father is stern, old-fashioned, and obsessed with all things Chinese. Dr. Wu refuses to let Jade go out on dates, and obviously, that is sacrilege for the soap opera that is this series. So the Wakefield twins will have to fix the situation. Jade wants to try out for the school's big dance production, but her father has forbidden her from dancing in public, because that is an offense to her Chinese heritage. Let me guess what's gonna happen. Jade disobeys her father and follows her heart, and when he sees how talented she is, he'll accept her just the way she is. Just like the Little Mermaid 3. Everyone at school assumes that Jade will be the star of the dance show, since she's the best dancer in school. I have no idea how she got a reputation as the best dancer, since we just established she's never danced in front of anyone before. But whatever. Jade's friends and teacher encourage her to audition. She talks to David Prentice, the cute boy from history class, who's making the set for the show. He also encourages her to try out, and he's so cute. The subplot revolves around the twins' father. Darn, now I have to get a picture for him. Uh, here, here, here's Mr. Wakefield. He's having a midlife crisis after being invited to a 25th high school reunion. The girls and mom put dad in his place by exposing him to teenager things like crazy clothes and loud music. Dr. Wu forbids Jade to go to the audition. He says it's a waste of her talent to perform in front of people she doesn't know. I... what? That doesn't even make sense! Jade gets upset because dancers need to have an audience instead of staying in their rooms and dancing with the baby like I do every Friday night. Uh, too much information there. Moving on! Jade does great in the auditions and gets a solo in the performance. David hugs her and asks her out on a date. She can't go because of Dad, so she makes up an excuse. Dad again refuses to let Jade dance in the show. Mom promises that she'll try to change his mind, but just in case she can't, Jade should be prepared to drop out at the last minute, if need be. We're gonna milk this drama cow all the way to the night of the performance, I bet. That drama cow never does anything timely. Rehearsals go well, and David keeps asking Jade out, because he doesn't understand that no means no. He starts to worry that she hates him. To soothe his feelings, Jade tells David that her grandparents run a laundry, something she's always kept secret because it's a Chinese stereotype. David takes this the wrong way and assumes she's a total snob, and that's why she won't date him. Snob! Of course, mean girl Amy spreads the story about the grandparents all over school. Jade mistakenly thinks David is responsible, so they have a huge fight, and the drama cow is loving it. The good news is that Elizabeth steps in at this point, and she has a heart-to-heart -heart talk with both Jade and David, which helps them solve all of their problems. Jade learns to embrace her Chinese heritage instead of hiding from it, and David learns to stop jumping to conclusions. David makes up with Jade right before the show, and she's inspired to do her best, especially when she sees Dad in the front row. A talent scout is so impressed with Jade, he offers to give her a huge college scholarship. But the woman offering the scholarship is racist, so Jade will have to change her name first. Jade rightfully turns down the scholarship, and she and her boyfriend disappear from the series forever. I'm told she reappears in the next series as a flirty teenager, and there's a NEXT SERIES?! Oh no! The end. Post-book follow-up. I read a few reviews of this book online, and most people hate it for being racist and awful. In particular, people think it's racist how the history teacher called on Jade when they were studying about China, and that it's racist for Jade to want to fit in with her classmates. People were less upset with the fact that Jade's family is made up of Chinese stereotypes, and I'm guessing that's partially because the book openly admits their stereotypes. Also, strict father who doesn't want his daughter to date isn't a Chinese-only stereotype. I agree. The one scene of Jade in history class was awkward and painful to read. I also didn't like the scenes of Amy the villain being racist against Jade. Those were not good. 
But other than that, I think the book I think the book mostly did a good job in doing a serious story about race and diversity. The book tries to have a moral about accepting yourself and not being ashamed of your heritage, and that's a good message. Yeah, the book misfires at several points, but its heart is in the right place, so I'm more inclined to go easy on it. I give Sweet Valley High number 50, out of reach, a 5 out of 10.